Hello everyone, I'm Captain Logan, and today I'm going to tell you how I felt about the 2014 thriller, sort of horror movie, uh, found footage thing called Creep. This was a Blumhouse movie that was uh, that is on Netflix right now as it's its sequel. Uh, came out in 2014. The sequel came out in 2017. This was written and stars written by and stars um, Mark Duplass uh, and directed by Patrick Bryce. Uh, this is a kind of two man um, horror film that uh, is about a guy who gets a job as a videographer to video ostensibly this guy uh, who is on the last legs of his life. He claims to have cancer, he's only got a couple months to live, and he says that he and his wife have a baby on the way, and he wants to make a film about his life for his child to watch after he's gone. And uh, he is clearly, uh, you know, as the movie suggests, He's a creepy dude. He's an odd duck. He's uh, he makes a lot of really weird requests. Uh, he will not stop uh, hugging the guy on the other side of the camera. Uh, he keeps offering him money. He keeps talking to him like they've been friends forever. Uh, a lot of his stories are not adding up in any way. Uh, it's hard to believe that he has the kind of wealth that he seems to. He doesn't talk about what exactly it is he does for a living. There are all these clues that things uh, again aren't adding up something is off about this guy and the entire movie uh, I find myself uh, w one part sympathizing with him and buying some of his story and two parts uh, really creeped out and which is how I'm supposed to feel of course uh, and really um, unnerved and um, feeling really uncomfortable and uh, every time I'm pretty sure that this guy is about to do something uh, absolutely insane and horrendous and violent and terrifying uh, the movie makes me start to sympathize with him again and wonder if he is not as bad and nuts as I think he is. Um, the uh, uh, screenshot or whatever it is uh, behind me on Netflix would immediately lead you to believe that this is just a straight up, you know, scream every couple of minutes kind of horror movie. And it isn't that. I don't know what that image is. Uh, I don't think that is anywhere in the movie, or if it is, I didn't notice. I don't. I don't know what that is. That is not indicative of the movie I'm watching. But the fact that it was sold that way, uh, that it's on Netflix like that, um, kind of clued me in as I'm watching it to, or or made me think anyway that uh, surely at some point the uh, really violent turn is, is has got to happen. And I won't tell you if that is the case or not. I will say this is somewhat misleading. But I will also say that this is a truly disturbing film, and in the absolute best way possible. At no point does it resort to gore or uh, or blood. It it doesn't um, it doesn't feel the need to do any uh, shock horror. It is insanely realistic for the most part. Uh, found footage is a genre that a lot of people, or a subgenre, I should say, that a lot of people uh, are kind of you know fed up with and um, immediately dismiss. And this makes that absolutely fresh again. I think it does a really good job of uh, justifying that format. Uh, there are only a couple of places in the movie where I found, found myself not totally buying that a camera would be on when it's on, but uh, for the most part, it handles that really well, and there were some places where I was kind of asking that question, and then immediately afterwards, uh, I went, oh, okay, that's why they're doing that. It kept um, g like explaining that and giving me good reasons for it, uh, as, as if the movie uh, was constantly... Uh, self-aware and and, uh, and and quite aware of its audience and knew what our expectations were and would subvert them but also you know quite a bit this is a somewhat unpredictable movie I will say that I think by the end it goes about where I kind of thought it might at the beginning but it keeps me guessing all the way through so even if I wind up in some places that I kind of thought I would be in uh, I was never sure about it and I really appreciated that experience. Um, hard to say if I enjoyed that experience. I guess uh, on the level of it's nice to be scared again. I kind of did. I am making this video minutes after I watched this movie. And um, I still have, I don't know if you can hear my voice. I still have kind of a skin crawly thing. 
Um, I have not had this experience with a, a movie that is supposed to be disturbing, that's supposed to be scary in a long time. Uh, I and, and like, call me a pansy, uh, maybe other folks didn't have this experience with it. There are horror movies that, I, that I've watched where I intellectually get that it's disturbing and am kind of, uh, you know, in, in my mind's eye creeped out by, but not in the visceral way that I had with this. It was too realistic. It was too believable. Uh, there are, in, like I said, there are uh, a lot of places where I wasn't uh, totally sure I was buying the found footage thing and then, and then I would immediately after that. I had that with a lot of things, this movie, where... I would be, you know, questioning story logic or uh, character things, and then uh, it would win me over on it right away or have a really believable, um, you know, well-executed explanation for something. And one of those things is that we don't get a whole lot of ultimately uh, real character stuff for either of the main characters in this movie. Uh, this is just a two-man film. Like I said, it is one guy, Aaron, who is uh, following around this uh, weird, creepy guy in the woods uh, and in uh, a cabin named Joseph. Uh, you'll have to watch the movie and see if that's actually his real name or not. Uh, but it's... Uh, it's just these two guys, and uh, as as I'm watching it, I keep uh, like learning stuff about Joseph and not being sure if I can buy it, but not getting a whole ton about Aaron. Uh, Aaron is this uh, videographer. I, I don't have a real good sense of even the kinds of things he tends to get hired to video. All I know is that he's got money problems, and he doesn't want to talk about it, and he lives alone. And we see his, his, his apartment and kind of how he lives a little bit, but we don't know. And he seems to be alone and kind of lonely like Joseph, but uh, not disturbed and m maybe mentally ill uh, in, the same, in the same way. This guy is uh, just as put together and well-adjusted as Joseph is pretending like he is. And by the way, um, this, uh, this actor... Um, Duplis, he is uh, absolutely fantastic in this role. Uh, he's wonderfully unassuming. He seems like the most uh, regular, um, you know, you know, kind of kind of sweet, um, unassuming guy. And he, like like that's the that's the body type. Uh, that's the face. That's what he that's what he exudes. But then he's also uh, really off putting and. Uh, and and in uh, you know Aaron's face in right in, right at the beginning immediately. So uh, at the same time as I'm like, okay, the type I'm looking at is unassuming. The the actions he's taking are exactly the opposite. But anyway, so it would be easy to lob the criticism. I don't know enough about these guys at this movie, but in the the, the context of this with with this particular kind of story, um, maybe we shouldn't. Uh, like it, it keeps kind of kind of winning me over on stuff. This is uh, a perfect example of you can get away with anything. You just have to get away with it, and of uh, you got to take everything on a case by case basis. You can break the rules of storytelling if you understand them in the first place, and the piece that you're that, that you're uh, putting together, the story you're telling, it's it's warranted for that. This movie wants to put me in, or me to put myself in the place of Aaron, and I found that very easy to do, and I felt it maybe too easy, maybe maybe in a in a in a, in a chilling way. Um, again, this is not an experience I've had in in years where uh, it was a little bit um, difficult immediately after watching this to walk around my house and not look over my shoulder a little bit. Uh, this is the kind of found footage thing where it was really easy to um, like subconsciously put myself in the protagonist's shoes and kind of look at my own life for a couple of minutes right after the movie as if it was his and have to remind myself I'm no longer watching a movie. Uh, part I, I, I considered um, like, like a giving 
give myself a few hours. I usually shoot these right afterwards, uh, but I thought about letting this one sink in just a little bit before I shot the, the video, and I would have gone to bed right away, and I didn't want to do that because I was kind of concerned about nightmares. Uh, and, you know, I, I sound like a little kid, like, oh, like, oh man, I watched this scary movie, and it was, it was a little bit too much for me to take. In, in, a, in absolutely the best way possible. I am really excited about looking at the sequel. Uh, I, so Greedy says that it is um, of the same quality and maybe even a little bit better than the first movie. And so I'm really excited about looking at it, but I just could not launch right into that after the experience I had with this movie. I, it, it was profound. I will warn you about jump scares with this, and that is another thing that it won me over on, particularly with the ending. Uh, there is almost a character thing with uh, Joseph, with the with the creep in this movie. Um, now I'm just going to have that song stuck in my head uh, all day. I'm a creep, and I'm a weirdo. Uh, but he, uh, I, I don't want to give away the ending, of course, but uh, there's a thing that happens right at the end um, with a jump scare that kind of makes it a character thing. And that is that is part of... The, the process of what he's doing throughout this movie. Uh, he's a stalker. He's constantly trying to make uh, Aaron think that uh, he is his, or trying, trying to like make him his best friend, uh, trying to make him think that he has his best interests at heart. Uh, it's a long time before we really understand his motivations. And, and again, even then, uh, his background, his past is mostly a blank slate. We get a little bit. There's some, there, there are some things you can piece together, uh, kind of like in Misery, uh, where you, you know, well, we know more about uh, the, the, the villain in Misery, I guess, than we do in this, but there are clues. You can piece some things together. Um, Misery, by the way, is one of the movies that uh, Duplass said that he was inspired by in order to, in, in making this movie, uh, but also apparently things like My Dinner with Andre, which is, of course, a completely different sort of thing, uh, but a minimalist um, two-person, very talky, mostly just just a long conversation kind of movie. This does take place. Th this is this is not um, a a uh, kind of one set drama sort of movie like Misery is, like uh, My Dinner with Andre is. It's it's uh, it's really three, um, but it's extremely minimalistic. Uh, we go in the woods. Uh, we, we do we do some stuff outside. We're inside of a uh, I, I keep saying a cabin, but it's it's a uh, it, it's much more it's much larger, more luxurious than that. But there's this uh, there, there's this great big house uh, in the middle of the woods that part of this takes place in, and then of course in Aaron's apartment. Uh, so it's just those three locations. Uh, this is yet another again uh, really minimalistic, uh, really you know budget thing that I think uh, could easily be put on stage and be really good as a stage play. Um, I'm absolutely feeling it. I think this might end up being one of my favorite horror movies. Uh, Guidi says he doesn't know if he wants to consider it a horror film. It is uh, certainly not a traditional horror film, but it like again, it's got it's got its jump scares. Uh, which end up being, uh, you know, somewhat believable. I thought it was a really kind of cheesy thing to do at first, and then I was like, oh, but that's this character. Uh, he just keeps, like, jumping in front of the camera. Uh, part of the fun of this for him is trying to freak out, uh, trying to scare the uh, guy behind the, the the camera, and he does it right away. We are introduced to him that way, and we leave him at the end that way as well. Uh, it is bookended with a jump scare. The movie is doing something uh, story-wide, narratively with that, uh, maybe even thematically with that. Uh, it is thinking about that. It is doing that on purpose, and I uh, really, really appreciate that. But anyway, it is, I guess... Um, I don't know, uh, how, how, however you want to classify this kind of thing. Uh, it's a psychological thriller um, as much as it's a horror film. Uh, but I guess it kind of fits in that category. Uh, but as, you know, if Misery does, I guess this does. Uh, but it... You know, I always, I've always said Misery is my favorite uh, horror film of all time. Uh, this could be getting up there. I mean, I just watched it. So we'll see how I feel about it uh, as time goes on and how it sits with me uh, and how I'm affected by the sequel. Um, I am going to go ahead and watch that soon, and I may or may not make a video about that. I'm not sure yet. Uh, but I uh, I really like this. I think it's great, and I am... Uh, 
really impressed with it for making me feel the way I the way I do right now. Uh, I don't want to go to bed after that, and uh, that's exactly what how you want to feel after a thing like this. Um, boy, it's uh, it's unnerving, and uh, it certainly is uh, entertaining. Um, it's not unnerving in the sense that like uh, I just you know wanted to look away from the screen, couldn't stand watching this. I kept wanting to, wanting to pause it. It's absolutely not that. Uh, there's a brilliant sense of urgency throughout this movie. It's gripping. It kept me uh, on the edge of my seat uh, all the way through, and um, I'm absolutely feeling it. This is wonderful. Uh, I wanted to be really careful not to give too much away on this one because. Um, I think you'll appreciate it the, the less you know, and Guidi told me to not look at anything before I went in, so all I had was this frame on net, and I don't know, I don't even understand what this is, but, uh, that's, that's all I saw, and of course, um, even that is gonna, you know, cloud your judgment and give you, give you preconceived notions, and uh, there's nothing like that. I thought this might be a paranormal activity sort of thing, and it's not that. It is found footage, uh, but, but it isn't that. And, um, it's, uh, in, 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 like, in, in the, like, loosest sense, it's found footage. Uh, like, it, it you know, I, I guess a lot of found footage movies are, you know, first person, somebody's walking around with a camera and it's edited together later. Um, but strictly speaking, uh, again, without giving too much away, this would not be footage that would be found, I guess. I mean, maybe, you know, way down the road it, it would be, but, uh, it's kind of clearly edited together for a different reason, I guess I'll say that. But anyway, um... If, uh, in order for, you know, you guys, if you've not seen it yet, to go in uh, as blind as I did based on my recommendation, this would be a 25-second video, and I would have told you absolutely nothing, and, uh, you know, I don't want to... I don't want to be all clickbaity. I wanted to actually talk about the the movie. Um, but the less you know about this going in, the better. I hope I did an okay job of not spoiling too much. But uh, take a look at it if uh, if you like psychological thrillers and if uh, you haven't actually found if if you're like me and you haven't found scary movies actually really scary in a long time. It is possible, uh, I'm not saying it definitely will, everybody's different, but it is possible that it will affect you in a similar way that it did me and, um, you, you know, creep you out uh, the way the way it wants to and uh, make you at least for a little bit want to turn all the lights on in your house. Um, this could be a Halloween movie for me. i uh, definitely feeling it. Anyway, thanks again to Guidi for making me watch it, and uh, I will be back with you again next week for another request. If you would like to make a uh, off-the-cuff request, you can go to Patreon, uh, uh, Geekvolution on Patreon, patreon.com slash Geekvolution at the $15 tier that allows you to make a request. You can do that one time uh, only, and uh, I will do one movie for you or a comic book, or you can uh, stick around in the queue and get yourself in the rotation, and you'll get a uh, review from me once every couple, couple to three months, depending on how many people are in there. I'm doing one of these a week right now, and um, we usually have anywhere between 9 and 12 requests on the board so uh, anyway thanks again for watching folks and I will see you again uh, next week with more videos here on Geek Evolution. bye folks